The Poetry Corner. The Poetry Corner. Poetry Corner. The Poetry Corner. The Poetry Corner. Good evening, everybody out there in the Poetry Corner world. King Atterbury, your host tonight. And tonight is the Langston Hughes tribute, which I'm going to give a little rundown of Mr. Langston Hughes, which his real name is James Mercer Langston Hughes, born February 1st, 1901, passed away May 22nd, 1967. He was an American poet, social activist, novelist, playwright, and a columnist for Joplin, Missouri. One of the earliest innovators of the literary art form called jazz poetry. Hughes is best known as a leader of the Harlem Renaissance. On September 4th, 1921, 19 Mr. Hughes, overwhelmed by his desire to see Harlem, watched as New York rose out of the bay. Having never been in a subway and conscious of his position of being black in a white world, Hughes' arrival into Harlem was unsurprisingly significant. His quote unquote verbatim. When I saw 135th Street, I held my breath. Hundreds of colored people, I wanted to shake hands with them, speak to them. I went up the steps and out into the September sunlight, Harlem. I stood there, dropped my bags, took a deep breath, and felt happy again. Well, he called 1920s Harlem the period when the Negro was in vogue, describing the infiltration of African art music, and literature into mainstream outlets. Some Harlemites claim the race problem had been solved through art, as many white folks flocked to Harlem to be amongst the Black artists in their stamping grounds. His poetry that followed, however, led to the label of poet low rate by Black critics, as he failed to solely reflect the beautiful of his race. Hughes, though maintained his independence, he said, I was not Africa. I was Chicago, Kansas City, and Broadway, and Harlem. Langston Hughes. I pass over now to Valerie Lorraine, my co-host. The stage is yours. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Poetry Corner. My name is Valerie Lorraine, and I am a poet, an author, and I am also a social media host. Um, I am very excited to have some wonderful poets with us tonight, and we're going to get to them shortly. I wanted to share with you uh, a piece by Langston Hughes, and it is called Harlem. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it implode? Langston Hughes. I would like to welcome our first guest to the center stage. Welcome, Leek. Um, greetings, King Kings. My name is Leek. Um, I'm an aspiring writer, currently working on the book called Poet of Corruption. Um, I'm also an owner and co-founder of um, Alico's Remedies, LLC, which we specialize in essential oils and 
herbs, making body butters and bath salts, here to collectively heal as a whole. Um, I will be reading a piece from Langston Hughes called The Negro, the Negro Speaks of Rivers. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood and human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans and I've seen his muddy bosom turn golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. That was wonderful. And right. your accent along with that piece just was so soothing uh, and fitting. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. There is so much great poetry about to happen. Um, we have Dope Female Trainer. Hey, good evening, everyone. My name is hey. Dope Female. I, I think you're about Atlanta. to be a little bit quiet. Can you hear me? Can you hear, King, can you hear? okay? Uh, she's, she's a little low. Yeah, I just want to make sure that everybody can hear you beautifully. Can you hear me now? That's much better. Okay, my name is Dope Female, and I am from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a spoken word artist as well as a motivation. And I'm also a football coach for a high school, a local high school here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'll be doing the piece, How Dare You. I am a word. Because greater is he that is he that is in the world. I am a movement. I dance to my own tune, allowing not a fraction of my innermost totality to be consumed. I am the brick and mortar. I possess the power to destroy and restore order. I am a queen. I quietly unleash elegant energy naturally. Now I ask you, how dare you? How dare you stand bold and unbothered on the ground that bleeds the flesh of my father? and drip the milk of my grandmama's breast, how dare you? And how dare you turn your back on those that sacrifice their backs so that you can reach back to give back, how dare you? And how dare you disrespect the melanin in your skin just to blend in with the Europeans who stole the of our old, fucked our men and raped our black women, how dare you? And how dare you look down on our seniors who were beat down because their skin was brown, treated as misfits, so that you could sit Stand near however you see fit so that at the end of the day, you can unapologetically say, Mama, I graduated. And although you didn't ask to be here, my dear, you see, I gave you the very best part of me. I gave you the flesh of my feet, the air that I breathe, the line of my life, the key to my history so that you can be free. So one day we write a legacy with the understanding that you can never be without my story. Uh oh, that's unfortunate. We are going to bring her back as soon as the technical difficulties fix themselves. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. I see that she dropped off the screen and we will absolutely get her back immediately. She is a powerhouse. Before I bring up our next guest, I would like to welcome you all to come to our Facebook page. It is as well called The Poetry Corner. If you are a poetry lover, you will be entertained by many, many different artists. If you are an artist, please do join the page. You're more than welcome to post your poetry, your events, books that you may have. It is absolutely a wonderful page. If you're here with us now, please do like and subscribe to this page. And you can also turn on the notification bell so that you get notified of all the shows that we have coming up. As such, I'm going to welcome Mr. Fun, Mr. Fun to the stage. Welcome. Hey, everybody. Mr. Fun here. That's M-I-S-T-A-F-U-N-N -N on all your social media platforms. That's TikTok, 
That's your Atari 2600, your ColecoVision, anything that you have. You want to find me, it's always Mr. Fun. Also, I'm the author. This is my fourth novel. It is called In the Company of Others. So you totally want to pick it up. Not only does it have great artwork that was done by me, but there are recipes that are in the book so you can enjoy what the characters are enjoying at the exact same time. Yes. So there's a lot of stuff, but always follow me, friend me, like me, Mr. Fun. Let's get into some poetry. Absolutely. In 1968, record execs had the brilliant idea telling James Brown, the godfather of soul, that say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud would sound better if it said, say it loud, I'm black, but I'm proud. Rather than ignite the flames, James brought children from both Compton and Watts into the studio to sing back up and make a point to all the black children listening. Say it loud. Say it with purpose. Say it with conviction. Be black. Be proud. Know your value. Know your history, the tree, and the roots. You come from God. God is great. He said it was good, so he made you black like grace on everything. I love your black is great. Say it loud. Make them hear you. Make them comprehend black girl magic, black woman wisdom. Black be like, we got next and we on first. Black be Monet Davis on the Sports Illustrated cover. She not a tomboy. She game changer. She Lizzo fierce with a fastball. Lapita Nwongo, Wakanda forever gorgeous. Zosa Pini, Tunsi, Miss Universe intelligent. Be black and proud. Not black, but proud. Be proud because black. Watch your mouth when you speak to black. Don't let a harmless suggestion get your feelings hurt. You see, this black made it through slavery. This black survived the black mama. This black lived through, I'm gonna tell you, daddy, your black is strong, can endure a cell, and is always ever ready. So say it loud, say it with purpose, say it with conviction. Be Richard Sherman black, be Legion of Boom loud, be proud and perspicacious. Yeah, Google that one. Be Issa Rae rooting for everybody black. Be Simone Biles and Allison Felix black. Be so iconic that you flip the narrative. When they see black, they say, impossible but when you see black you say i'm possible be the perfect clap back if 10 black men call one white man coach make a hundred million white men call one black man president make the universe remember that obama strut michelle and that mask and pantsuit gliding like i wish you would go low make them sick when they have to say obama cares you know what be jesus black don't look at the cross study the continent born in a low-income neighborhood black Roll with 12 dudes he called bros. Black. Gave his life for a crime he didn't commit. Just insert any innocent black name here. And when they try to bury you, be resiliently black. Be resurrected black. Be so black that your life matters and resist until every black life matters to all the black children listening. When they say, ooh, you so black, you say yes. And I'm proud of it. Don't let them change your conjunction. Be schoolhouse rock and roll be the black innovative mind behind most modern day conveniences but you say it loud you say it with purpose you say it with conviction be black and be proud thank you Whew. that was some powerful poetry yeah. that was dope bro i like that definitely on point that was absolutely amazing okay i see that dope female trainer has Recovered from a technical issue, so let's try this again. Well, I, I can't, my screen is, is frozen. It is frozen, however, we could hear you just fine. Would you like to try? Mm, I don't think it's working. Can you try saying something and see if your voice is coming through? Okay, we might have to um, try that one more time. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, we're gonna go back to Leek and get her to come up. Hi. Hey. Um, who am I? I am the lightning before the thunder hits the atmosphere. I am the rain that so innocently falls, powerful in the way that it washes away things and pain. I am the goddess that invades your mind when society fails to mention who I am versus who they portray me to be. I am the light, the wind, and the trees. I am divine essence, and divine essence is me. Together with one subconscious, I am you, you are me, 
united, we are free from the domestic mindset used from the domestic mindset used to define actions from trauma of gener of trauma of generational history. I am designed in the image of the most high. I am the unseen the to why. Realness runs through my blood. Truth is the vessel I use to reign supreme. Inhale my pain and understand that I know the meaning behind my name. I was sorry. I was giving you space. Hey, I, was, yeah. I wasn't I sure if was that more. was the ending or not, but know, um, right? that was a wonderful piece. Very beautiful. Yeah, Let's very nice. bring up Dope Female Trainer. I see her screen moving, so I think that we have success. There we go. I'm having such a hard time. Okay, so I'll try to. That's okay. We're persevering, and that's the point. I am a word. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am a movement. I dance to my own tune, allowing not a fraction of my innermost totality to be consumed. I am the brick and mortar. I possess the power to destroy and restore order. I am a queen. I quietly unleash elegant energy naturally. Now I ask you, how dare you? How dare you stand bold and unbothered? on the very ground that bleeds the flesh of my father's father and drip the milk of my grandmama's breast, how dare you? And how dare you turn your back on those that sacrifice their backs so that you can reach back to give back? How dare you? And how dare you disrespect the melanin in your skin just to blend in with the Europeans who stole the souls of our old, bucked our men and raped our black women? How dare you? And how dare you look down on our seniors who are beat down because his skin was brown, treated as misfits so that you could sit, stand near, or however you see fit so that at the end of the day, you can unapologetically say, mama, I graduated. And although you didn't ask to be here, my dear, you see, I, I gave you the very best part of me. I gave you the flesh of my flesh, the air that I breathe, the line of my life, the keys to my history so that you could be free to one day rewrite a legacy with the understanding that you could never be without my story, my testimony, my bloodline and my legacy, oh baby. There's nothing more that I want than the very best for you, but not at the expense of losing you, not to them, but because you have been blinded by society's definition of acceptance, baby. You have most definitely lost sight of you. The wars that were fought, the lives that were bought, the blood that was shed for you and your sister to lay your fucking head, how dare you? You see, I, I sacrificed my life so that you could be the next Booker T, Maya Angelou, Marcus Garvey, Michelle Obama, Muhammad Ali, but baby, please don't forget this dope ass Shaq G you see, cause my love runs deep and this covenant I will forever keep. So to deny you was to most definitely deny me. And if asked if I would do this shit uh, over and over and over again, I would say, hell yeah, most definitely. Why? Cause I give my life completely. Thank you. Mm -mm -mm. Listen to that. What a powerful piece. Incredible. All right, dope. Lovely. Dope. <laughs> Welcome to everybody who's joining us. It's lovely to see your comments coming up of support of these poets. They are definitely some powerhouses, and it is our pleasure to have them. I would like to remind you to like and subscribe to this channel. And if you'd like to get notified of future shows, please do hit the notification bell. I'm bringing Mr. Fun back to center stage. So if you are just coming, I got to let you know, Miss Fun, M-I-S-T-A-F-U-N-N, -N, on all your platforms. You want to follow me, friend me, like me. Also, you totally want to get this beautiful book. Look at the beautiful artwork that is there. It's done by Mr. Fun. Yes. It even has artwork on the back. Yes. It's amazing. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's lovely. It's an amazing read, too. You'll enjoy it. Best book you'll ever pick up. Okay. Let's do another poem. If you were to combine the experience of seeing Purple Rain in theaters for the first time and why you shouldn't feed a gremlin after midnight, wait for the reaction of Pop Rocks and Pepsi. 
The aftermath would be the 1984 version of Mr. Fun, a kaleidoscope of weird and awkward moments on a collision course with a beautiful one named Belinda Porter. A girl was the very reason my seventh grade voice needed a search party. She was a chocolate fountain of pretty whose dimples made my jaw swan dive to the floor every day that I saw her. No one ever told me how to handle a crush, how to say, I like you. Without feeling as if I swallowed an earthquake, this trembling in my chest was my heart planning a jailbreak and my throat, well, my throat was the escape hatch. You see, middle school described me as the bashful, tongue-tied, latchkey kid splattered in the shadows of unpopular. I often cosplay different identities because pretending to be someone other than me is the only thing I ever felt mildly comfortable doing and navigating this body to feel worthy enough to speak, something I was never good at. You see, my confidence was more oil spill than iceberg and uh, acceptance. Yeah, acceptance was more like a wax on, wax off experiment. And the result, me playing the role of Johnny Lawrence and rejection being the crane kicking all valley champion screaming, Banzai, Daniel son. Most of the men I saw growing up weren't Cobra Kai. They were cast members of the Wiz. No brains, no heart, no courage. Just boys who treated women like Swiss army knives, used them when they served a purpose. They would tell me a fist is louder than a raised voice. They were junkyards of bad advice. But for decades, I would believe them. I would only lift my hands to bury my sound in my notebook art gallery. And sometimes, you know, sometimes I wish I had a flux capacitor. Then I could delorean myself to age 12. I would say to the artist with the red trapper keeper, there will be days when you feel like you're in a fist fight with your own survival. More times than not, doubt will punch like Tyson and you won't even have the cheat code to make it beyond glass, Joe. But listen, you were born to be a peacock in a world of roosters. Stop hiding your feathers and limitations that don't even apply to you. Do not muzzle your existence wishing if only you could fly. You are so beautifully amazing. God will bring heaven to earth so the clouds can applaud when you atlas a tune, when you scale the tower of your next Toastmaster victory. Have faith, your words will form like the lion of Voltron. Use your tongue like a blazing sword when silence and suffocation Look like the identical twins waiting to bank you after school. Just remember, it takes a hundred muscles to speak. So run your mouth, unearth your voice, bench press every melody from your throat like a Tears for Fears protest song. Shout, I promise, nowhere in this create your own adventure do you remain quiet when you reconnect with Belinda. Her fountain of pretty will be an ocean of beautiful. She will remember the picture of gizmo you gave her just before midnight when you finally speak. You might get the urge to skydive into her dimples without a shoot. Not going to tell you what happens next. But if you need a push, it is the sound of your voice that is the ignition to her smile. Ooh, I felt the love in that. That was a great piece. That's what's Thank up, you yo. Peacock amongst Yeah. Women. Went in. <laughs> Went in on that one. It goes all in. That was wonderful. Um, the next poet who's going to dive deep for us, we are going to go back to Dope Female Trainer, um, and then we'll go back through the rotation. You see, I was stamped with the initials SSG. Those were the letters that shaped me into the beast that stands before you. See, I was born August 13th. Somewhere around, well, let's just say, 8.53 and I made an impression before I pressed in. One breath and I inhaled and the doctors knew then. Hmm. They knew I was going to be hell because I, I bust into this bitch standing on both my feet. Now y'all know she her daddy's child. And I think I heard that shit about 50 11 times and as if each time was the first time. I held my head up and I stuck my fucking chest out and baby I smiled. Because you see I was my daddy's sweet. You fuck around if you want to, and he'll make you a casualty over me. Or so I believe. In his eyes, I could do no wrong. You see, I was my daddy's sweet little love song. Y'all, this man's voice was nothing short of a melodic sound. Shit, he was smooth with that shit. You fuck around, and you'll start grooving to that shit. Voice so melodic, he could calm the rowdiest bitch down. You see, he had the body of a Greek god. And he was the only man that could stand before me. 
and have my heart. And I, I never wanted to disappoint them. So I tried my fucking best to be just like him. Even if it meant denying myself for him until one day, shit got real real. You see, he decided he was gonna hang with some niggas that wanted to steal and every man was for himself, except for that man that was fatally shot to death. Flashing light was what I saw. They handcuffed my daddy and threw his black ass in the back of a DeKalb County cop car. Looking out as I looked in, wishing time could begin again. Mm. What a tangled web we weave when we conspired to deceive and fuck over our responsibility. Now he never knew that when he woke up, he'd fuck up and get locked up. Now he's too ashamed to look up. And the realities of his daughter's life is a fantasy. Another day, it's the same old shit. A black man gone and a, a daughter left all alone. And I'm sitting here, we write this fucked up ass love song. Did you tell him? Did you tell him that every time I looked in my eyes, I saw your lies stand back at me? Did you tell him? Did you tell him though I knew the truth? I still covered you because I loved you and that's what a daddy daughter do. Did you tell him daddy? Did you tell him that every night I sat by the phone hoping that the next call was you saying sweet? It's your daddy and I'm coming home. Did you tell him daddy? Did you tell him that when they came for you they fucked over my life too because I'm the flesh of your flesh, the air that you breathe, the line of your life back on August 13th. Did you tell him daddy? No, fuck that, I think I just did. Come on. Um, oh, dope. I um, fly you know, like this. this group here is just going to continue to entertain you over and over again. Make sure that you do follow each of those po these poets on their own platform. Um, if you missed their handle, then be absolutely certain that they will be in the captions when this is posted for replay. And I'm pretty sure that they will tell you yet again when they come back up because they definitely want to entertain you from their own social media and they are worth the follow. I am going to also suggest that you like and subscribe to our page here and hit the notification button so that you can be notified of future shows. If you like these poets, let me tell you, they will certainly be back, but we also have other poets that will entertain you just as much. I'm going to break leak back to center stage now hi hey reflections reflections of a broken heart lay shattered shattered at her feet body heavy mind racing looking in the mirror she is me lift your head queen and adjust your crown you're too powerful and you're too needed it's the crown in your own traumatic pain, tears, and worldly validation. You are God, one of God's most beautiful creations. I sometimes it gets deep and it's hard to breathe. Just close your eyes and inhale. One, two, three, release. Remember who you are to set yourself free. Meditation causes elevation. Time. <laughs> Messages to my subconscious. Reprogramming the real me. All right, Leek. There's some power to that piece. Beautiful. Oh. All right, Mr. Fun. Come up, tell us where we can find you one more time and hit the mic. Yes, so I'm so glad to be back here. Also, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fun turned 50 today. What? I'm half a century old? Woohoo! Woo I'm a black man who made it to see 50. Booyah! So, M I S T A F U N N, that is dot com, that is on YouTube, that is on TikTok, as I said before, on your Atari 2600. Maybe you have that little pong that goes boop, 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 boop. You can find me there too, if you got one. Maybe you use a rotary phone, all that cool stuff. Follow me, friend me, like me. Yes, all the shenanigans. Um, I feel like I will do this poem to close it out, I think. Yes. Not That's quite. For me. Not quite? Okay, cool. So this, But this is my poem right here. Last night I spoke with the ancestors. This morning I woke with a message on my heart and a poem on my tongue. They said, 
if the Black Panther knew how much it is feared, it would do a lot more harm. Now imagine this beautifully majestic, solitary creature that only attacks when threatened or provoked can't be that dangerous. The ancestors must have seen something I couldn't, but look closely. The panther is really a dark-skinned leopard or a jaguar. The only difference is genetics. It's melanin. You see, this charcoal-colored big cat has a bite force of 200 pounds per square inch, can swim, climb, and jump with the best of them. But from birth, it struggles to hunt during the day because it's easily spotted, quickly identified as the loser in a one-horse race. There are times, I'm sure, it wishes its skin wasn't so evil. But the moment the panther changes the time it hunts, it realizes its darkness is an asset, not a handicap. It immediately transforms into a fearsome predator. Life slows down for this ghost of the forest. It uses the night to perfect its survival techniques, and I get it. Sometimes blackness feels like a stumbling block to your own survival. From birth, you struggle just to make it through the day without feeling the anxiety that your skin might betray you. It's not uncommon to code switch, try to fit in, drop your pride like a suitcase, a bad habit you're tired of carrying. Timing and perspective are everything when you change the elements around you and realize that nighttime is just misdirected sun and that your shade is not an enemy of the light, just an opportunity to perfect your technique. That melanin, when fully understood, is so unbelievably brilliant. It moves, produces, attracts biochemical sunlight. You ever wonder why black folks stand out everywhere? Why eyes find it convenient to be drawn into their force? Because there's a wilderness of faith pounding inside your chest, trying to claw its way out. This is not a time to be a ghost. Stop hiding your brilliance in a casket of inferior. Ride your blackness like it's strapped to a rocket. No handlebars, no seatbelts, no brakes, just a gas tank full of I dare you and a match. You need to realize that your melanin is so amazing. If people knew how boundless it is, they would quit trying to tame you, quit trying to marginalize your color outside the line existence. This poem was written for people who were threatened and provoked to think that black is always on the wrong side of less than never equal to when everything about you is greater than when you feel your hair being game hunted by wonder bread fingers when the world around you feels like a clan of hyena if another color redacted person tries to colonize your magic your joy just remember your genetic makeup is a library a billion stories tall Reference your history and embrace your color like your bones have locked jaw. You need to wake up from a night of training, heart pounding and engraved reminder. You are a black panther, a beautifully majestic tsunami of an individual just waiting to be realized. Thank you. Well, I must say, right, Mr. Fun. Absolutely so brilliant love. piece. As well, a very happy yeah. birthday. We are so happy that we get the happy opportunity to celebrate right with you. That's absolutely wonderful. Okay, so we are going to keep this going. It is very exciting. Um, I think that this will be our final round, just so that everybody knows. Um, I'm watching the clock here, so um, which is my job. But you guys just keep on bringing it fast and hard. So, don't female trainer, we're going to come back to you. I remember when, I remember, I remember when we, we used to appreciate our black mamas. We would clean our rooms, made good grades, and not a day went by without us telling her that we loved her. And now it seems that things have changed. Respect is rejected. Children neglected and schools are hectic and they dare your ass to say some shit. Perception is the reflection of misguided direction and blind leading the deaf and they barely know their right from their left and nigga is a trigger if you ain't a nigga. Go figure. Everybody gets a pass and 33 registered but only a few show up in class and it's no longer earn your keep. Say excuse me and wait to be acknowledged before you speak and wash your dirty ass hands and say your grace before you eat boy. And now you claim that you came into this world alone? Well, I guess 10 months in my womb and you, you never considered this house your home. You see, I built this foundation, this stage and this throne. And when times turned to darkness, hell, I made sure that the light stayed on. I'm your Georgia power. I'm your built-in PhD, graduated magna cum laude of Life University. I'm your educator, peacemaker, navigator, and motivator. And when trials and tribulations nearly got the best of me, it was you that I thought about and I earned my, uh, my motherly degree. You see, you're the life in me. 
You are quick to point the finger when life offers you a slice of humility, knocking you on your ass. And rather than take a seat, you want to blame everything on me. But baby, I'm your safety. I'm your loyalty. I held your ass down like gravity, willing to sacrifice every bit of me before death finds you at 23. You see, I'm the average you breathe. I'm your lawyer, your voice, your jury, and your transporter. And with tears poured from your eyes, baby, I was the judge to restore order because I'm your justice. I fought for you. I took shots for you. I lost sleep for you, baby. I almost died for you. I'm your protector. I won't lie to you. I'll never deny you. I'll shed tears for you and I'll pray for you. I'm your comforter. I'll break bread with you. I won't even judge you. I'll even forgive you and I'll make time for you. I'm your supporter. I'll counsel you. I'll even cover you. My heart, I most definitely give to you, baby. I will cherish you. So my promise to you is to guide you. I'm your shoulder. I'll always love you and I'm going to respect you. This is my promise to you. But the one thing I will not do is to continue to be denied by you because, baby, I'm your mama. Another fantastic piece. Oh, girl. (laughs) I am always in awe of poetry, especially those that have um, political messages or or the depths of education to them. I've always said that the first thing that we do as artists is entertain. And once we have everyone's complete attention by being entertained, we can deliver our message. Once our message is delivered, the receiver of that message gets the opportunity to decide if they'd like to advocate towards that message. So I believe that each of the poets who is here tonight on the screen has done such a great job entertaining that their message is heard And now it's in the hands of everyone who's heard it to make a decision what they would like to do with that message. You guys are really powerful. I'm going to hand this back to Leek now so that we can hear her next piece. I know I can be what I want to be. Echoes in my mind, reminiscing on my innocence, my once upon a time, when I believed that I could be anything that I wanted to be when affirmations were subconsciously manifesting my dreams, reflecting on the deepest parts of me. Mm. When did I lose my belief? What made me change the way that I think? Fragments of my heart lost in the abyss, pain so deep, the depth is impossible to see from the outside. So much childhood trauma lay caged behind these sad eyes. For my children, I've cried a million times, fighting not to fail them. So every day I give myself a million reasons why I must stay alive. Suffocating, some days it's hard to breathe, drowning in my own sorrow and grief, blowing kisses to my two angels in the sky. Every day, my mental breaks as my soul dies, yet still I survive. You are the creator of your own reality. Set your soul free. Change the way that you think and be grateful to just be. Give yourself gratitude and embody the I am. Things I say out loud to remember who I am. Quite the message. That was deep. All right, Lee. Yeah, that was definitely deep. was one of them. Um, that was the kind of piece, and I've heard them all night long, but I will just say the, specifically reminding me that that's the kind of piece that I would absolutely love to be able to sit with on my own time after hearing it so that I could absorb it in the many different ways that, that it wishes to sink in for me. Great piece. You answered that piece with this with the song. I know I can be what I want to be. I can't listen. <laughs> Sounds like a little conversation behind the scenes is required there to do some extra collabing. That's a wonderful idea. Mr. Fun, I'm going to bring you back up. Okay. Um, 
I want to do a haiku before I jump into this poem because everybody should know Mr. Fun is your two time haiku slam champion. So, haiku 575. Three hard things to say. I was wrong. I need help. And Worcestershire. Worcestershire. <laughs> That's haiku for you right there. Um, oh, and one other one. I just want to jump into this one. Getting pregnant on a pullout bed. Funny or just ironic? <laughs> okay, so there we go. Let's run into this poem right quick. Um, they say home is where the heart is. And even though I reside in the ATL, that is not where I live, let's be clear. No matter how far you move away from here, the charm of this city, it never leaves you. So when they ask, where are you from? I say Baltimore. You see that T is half silent because it's half mixed with lemonade. Don't you dare call it an Arnold Palmer. Half and half is what you say. Right after, hey, oh, let me get a chicken box. What's some fries with salt, pepper, ketchup? Because ordering just salt or just pepper will get your order all messed up. Because the salt and the pepper's in the same container. The heart of the city has its own flavor. You feel me? See, I was born on the west side, but I was raised on the east. Keep your head on the swivel what you learn in them streets. Don't ask about the wire. Omar, all that, make believe. But the names that ring out here, are the makers of history. Benjamin Banneker, Thurgood Marshall, Oprah, when she was a reporter for WJZ, Kurt Schmoke, Erica Bridgeford, the mother Teresa of Baltimore, the great Begatti. Thank you, Elijah Cummings. This city, it pushes out greatness. I pray that I make you proud. I'm standing on the recipes of ancestors handed down. They would try to tell you it ain't all that pretty here. Well, gentrification never is, but tonight we're gonna take it back to where we live, call this a Baltimore love letter. You see, back in the day when I was young, we're not kids anymore, but do y'all remember block parties? Driving through Drew Hill Park just because the sun came out today. The sounds of K-Swift, Miss Tony, EA, EA, woo! Somebody say, get your hair did at the shop on somebody's kitchen. Baltimore looking good, it's like a religion. When the line at the barber was too long to stay, everybody got a cousin with some clippers that'd give you that bipped up fade. Shopping at Mondalmin, the avenue for those Easter Monday clothes. You know that outfit you wore, the Hammer Jacks, Odell's, and I can't forget Volcanoes. When them little hoppers couldn't stay out late, they had Shake and Bake on Saturday afternoon. But at night, it was Painter's Mill and Rhythm Skate. You see, I am 410 stamp, and that's how I've been, Ben. Meet me on the corner of Drew Hill and Rough Ends. Tell me what you want. Hard times of struggle. Come back in a few minutes. It's now a hustle. Selling African oils, mixtapes, and all your household needs. This is the Baltimore. They don't show you on TV. But we say, yo, now that's a bop. Oh, ayo, sweetheart. I'm trying to give you all that. And I ain't with the half. Me, you about to get smacked. If you didn't work downtown, the inner harbor was the place to be. You were a star if you had a job flipping and singing at the fudgery. On Fridays, them Lexington Market dancers give us life on God. Call our music go-go, and we're going to have to fight. Now I got some street smarts, but mostly I got that book knowledge, alumni of the Baltimore City College. Now here, you might think I'm going to talk trash about Baltimore Polytech, but if you didn't go to either school on our name, put some respect, because best believe we will dot that I. Tell me, where can 30,000 people come together and nobody die? The city poly game, 130 years strong. The pride, the love, the excellence lives on. Now, a special shout out to them Lady Doves of Weston in memory of Dr. Rosetta Stith and all the mothers of Paquin. I was born in 72. I didn't see things change. You see them 12 o'clock boys any time of day from White Lock to Cherry Hill, from Sedonia to Dofield, from the smell of Smith's Blue Ribbon bread bacon in the morning to the quiet of Bethlehem Steel. We held hacks way before there was an Uber. And Mr. Lee, Miss Kim owned every Yakami joint cleaners and store on the corners. We some ratchet fanatics. Why you think that we be dragging a real Baltimore Sun headline? We drip passion. We say we geeking. You bluffing too many. You crouching. You might think I'm crazy. I could never be less because be more is what made me. Now, everywhere you go, they're going to try to tell you the dark side. But this right here is all about pride. <laughs> Thank you. Incredible. Um, you yes. know, as far as for everyone we've seen tonight, I've had the same reaction. It's not just your words and how you've chosen to wind them which is in itself incredible. It is also your cadence in your presentation. You have definitely brought the pieces that you presented to life on a whole mother level. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are not done though. So um, 
You know, there's one thing that I get asked a lot, and I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to ask each of you to respond to this. How do you feel, um, or what do you feel, I should say, is the most inspiring thing that's happened to you as an artist that you felt that you had growth from? We'll start, we'll go on the same rotation. Dope female. Um, growth. Life. Being, um, humbled about what life has brought me and, and being able to articulate it with pen and paper rather than articulate it with my voice because I can strike a mighty blow with my voice and I can burn bridges. So one thing I'm able to do is write, erase, and repeat. Write, erase, and repeat. And this saves a lot of relationships and it saves a lot of heartache and it saves a lot of things you may not admit at the time, but you're able to go back and write, erase, and repeat. And with that, I would say wisdom. Wisdom stands for working in silence, determine one's maturity. I become wise enough to know that everything that I, that I think doesn't have to come out. And how terrible is wisdom that gains so powerful when it goes wise. So I just say wisdom in life. That's so much. Beautiful. That is, that is uh, definitely something to consider. I, I really like that wisdom acronym. That's going to stay with me for a long time. Thank you. Leak? I would have to say I put it finding myself um, going through a lot of heartache and traumatic experiences it it builds up inside of you and coming into a society where it's okay to not be okay and the only way to get it out is to write it you know it's so many thoughts are swirling around in your head and sometimes, you know, I, I tell people this, I just want to run. You know, I'm not going to get far because I'm not fit. But at the same time, the ideology of it all is just trying to get away from me. And the only way that you could do that is to put it on pen and paper. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to say losing, losing two of my kids before I got to know who they could have been or who they really are. It did something to my soul. So mm -hmm. to know that as a person that I'm still here and that I'm I'm a walking miracle within this that's what makes me grow as as a person because this this is my first time doing this. I would have never came for it. But why not? You know, I was told to use the world as my platform. So as an as an artist I was able to be able to be able to manipulate my words a little more and make it where I like for people to be able to feel it. That was that was very inspiring. Yeah, very inspiring. Def definitely. Uh, yeah. Mr. Fun? The question coming to me now? Yes. Okay. Sir. Can, could you kind of could you kind of repeat it just so I can make sure I answer it right? I could kind of repeat it. <laughs> um basically it was, you know, what what do you feel was an inspiring event or moment that you had that deepened your poetry? Something that that you know you had a noticeable change in in delivering. Um, I will say that for me, it was probably competition. Um, mm -hmm. That was probably that moment where you know I was I had gone from the point of writing the rhythmic and rhyme type poems to being focused more on delivering a message. Um, I'm a generally jovial person. Like, so it's like people will come around me, they're like, yeah, you always have that kind of energy. Um, and I just decided that it's a lot easier to share a message through humor, but then also to just have that burst of energy that's always emanating from you. And the fact that you can write in such a simplistic form that a person who isn't a poet can understand what you're saying and they can connect with your words. So that's always my my thing. Like originally I was writing from that place of like, you know, forever eternal sadness or the love that we always write about, like, oh, I love her so much and all this other stuff. And then I realized how to expand my words um, and get really creative with how I deliver them. But then also meeting different people from different areas. All of that, all of that kind of contributed to 
making me, uh, I would say, a better poet, but also even a better coach. Mm. Okay. That is, that's really powerful. That's a great answer. I can see how that would really change the direction of your poetry. King, would you like to answer as well? No, nah, I'll pass it this time. <laughs> All right. Okay, well then, at this time, sorry, let me see if they went because I think I heard, I heard everybody's piece. You all have some amazing pieces. I was just trying to remember. Um, did we share three? Or, I mean, did we share two or three? Did you did you do three pieces? I, I was keeping track. So, oh, we lost your sound. Okay, I was, I was just wondering. No, if, there we go. There. there we go. Okay, so um, I'm going to. Uh, we're coming to the end of the show. So what I'm going to do now is how we always close. So I'm going to thank everybody for their incredible poetry. You are all wonderfully gifted. Um, you have a beautiful message. It's not only entertaining, but it is deeply powerful. And I can Definitely. see that you have embraced the purpose in your life. So I am incredibly thankful from our team here at the Poetry Corner on YouTube and on Facebook, we thank you for your time and do hope that you will come back. Now, um, I'm going to read a piece and then I'm gonna hand it over to King and he's gonna close. So if you are joining us, whether it is live in, live on the, sh the platform now, or if you're watching on replay, we would love it if you would like and subscribe to our page. You can click the notification bell so you get notified of future shows. The guests who you've seen on today, we do hope that they will come back, but we also have other people planned to come and join us, so we would love to have you again. This is one of my newer pieces, and it's called Fireflies. I remember the first time I saw the magic of fireflies on a road trip rest stop in the Midwest amongst lavender skies of a heated summer night. My excitement was childlike and untamed. As I confined the light and the safety of my widely cupped hands, I held that light in captivity for as long as I could, letting my heart pump secretly encanted spells with the beat with each beat to keep this moment alive forever as all good things come to an end i slowly peeled my fingers back releasing the little lantern from within my capture I watched as the light floated towards the other glistening life near a split tree hit by lightning from yesterday's storm. Graffiti on the wash house, giving the feel of urban walls, suggested that Benny loved Jada. Did he really? I wondered. And how much? I remember thinking how much I thought you might love me as you bent to lay butterscotch kisses on my lips. The candy I bought you at the market earlier, now wedged between your cheek, the slight bulge giving up its hiding place. We watched the butterfly moths and lightning bugs well into the depths of dusk as the last embers of their lights became my only hope that this would not end. And if, if on cue, the stars lit up the sky while the roaring hues of the final shimmer of sunset do dove into dulled darkness. What I remember most is the joy I felt and how close we were without the distractions of others. Those fairy tale moments made it so painfully hard when it was finally time to say goodbye to you. Valerie Levine. Mm. 
Thank you, friend. All right, Val. The energy of your, 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 um, your <laughs> presentation was amazing. I like how you did it. was so it kept it in that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I am going to turn the show over to King now. King, I do hope that you will indulge us with a piece before you uh, close the show. Sure, I can do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. This piece is titled Cover Me. Look at me, moving around this normal place of dark, evolving energy, searching. Inside many places of joy and comfortable kindness, the hope. Never again allowing disappointment to distract my stillness, discipline. Active motion to go ahead and take charge of anything I want to do and more. Weather report. Doesn't matter because of the ways I walk into the unknown and embrace what it is and what isn't for me. Living. Breathing and knowing that all will be well because of my faith and the fate has already been determined. Coexistence. Sharing space through time and understanding the placement of myself with connective interactions. Memories. Having the inability to see what's good and what is not that feeds my heart, mind, and soul. Boundaries. Executing my rights as a guardian to access of who, what, when, why, and how. The source. Believing that the internal communication between right and wrong will bring forth lessons of righteous elevation. Blessings. Blessings. Embracing a strong window of opportunity to exhibit a highest form of creative happiness. King. Woo. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hey, I just want to say I enjoyed the beautiful poetry tonight. You guys were dope and fly. You know what I'm saying? Y'all definitely set it off. And for everybody out there in the Poetry Corner world, Poetry Corner universe, we want to thank y'all for tuning in. Tune in next Tuesday, same channel, 8 p.m. We're going to get it popping. Y'all have a beautiful night. Thank you again. Peace, love, and poetry. And we out. Bye.